Hi, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this employee timeline fillable form in Word. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my margins are as wide as I want them. So if you can't see all rulers, go to view, go to rulers and make sure it's checked. Now you can either go to layout, go to margins, click on the drop down and you can select narrow or you can select normal or a choice or you can customize the margins or you can hover your cursor between the gray and the white section, click and just simply move those margins up or down in accordance with how much information you want on your form. You can do the same at the top here, I tend to leave them, but again, this is perfectly customizable for you, so you can choose to move those if you want to. The next thing I'm gonna do is just press the return key before I insert a table. So go to insert, go to table, click on the drop down, and here I'm gonna go down to insert table, and the number of columns I want is five, and the number of rows I want is 21, and just click OK. Now I find that when these rows are inserted, they're quite small, the height's quite narrow. So I like to select my tables, go to layout, and in the height here, you can choose whatever number you want to. I tend to select one centimeter and press enter. Again, once the table is selected, you can do that by selecting this top left square. I can go up to any of these icons here in the layout tab and select the alignment of my text. So I'm going to select the align to center left. And as you can see, all the blue shading has moved to the center of my rows. So now I can begin to enter in my text. And for the first row, I'm going to select all of the cells, go to layout and select merge cells and begin to put in my title. Now, if you don't want to do this whole form, there is a link below where you can download this form if you want to. And if you also know about tables, that's fine. You can fast forward to the section where I go through how you can make this a digital fillable form. So I won't make you watch me type everything, but I will stop the video to show you the different techniques. So here I'm just going to select the text, go to the Home tab. I'm going to make this bold. I'm going to go to table design. I'm going to select a shading color, click on the drop down. You can select from any of these colors or go to more colors. And then you can select from your color wheel. You can move this cursor around and select any color of your choice and it will appear in this square here and click OK. So I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna select this shading color here. Then select my text, go to home. And in the font color, I'm going to select white. Now I've done all of that now, so I can simply copy and paste it across to my other headings as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some text here and then we'll show you how you can move these lines to create the perfect form. Okay, so at the moment I've got all my information in, but I want to be able to move these lines so that I can cater for my answers and also the text itself. So all you need to do is hover between the two cells where you want to move the line, hover over the line, click and drag, and you can see I can move that line out. And I want to merge these two cells, so click, drag across, go to Layout, and select Merge. And you can do that for both of them. And then I want to merge these cells at the bottom and click Merge. So I want to move these two cells over a bit to give me a little bit more room for name. I'm just going to move that one over a little bit. So select these four cells, hover over this line and just move it over. And then do the same to these two as well and move that over. Now I'm actually going to split the table for the new section. So place your cursor below the line you want to split from. Go to layout and select split table. And you can see I've got a small gap between these two tables. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my next section. Again, I'm gonna go up to layout, merge these cells, and then just move these across. Then I'm going to split the table again, put in my next section header. Again, split the table, next section header, just merge those cells. Once again, I'm just going to move these out. And again, this way. 
just merge these cells and split the table again. Then I'm just going to merge all of these cells. Then I'm just going to nudge the table down and at the top here I'm just going to put in a heading, go to insert, text box, click on the drop down and select draw text box, click and draw out that text box and just enter in your heading. I'm going to select the text, go to home, increase the font size using this increase font size tool. I'm going to make it bold. I'm then going to align it to the center. Deselect, you can see we've got this black outline around the outside. We've also got a white background. I'm going to get rid of both of those. So select it, go to shape format, go to this icon and select no outline. This icon shape fill, no fill. And then I'm going to go along to align, click on the drop down and select align to center. Then I'm just going to use my arrow, move that down slightly. Finally at the bottom, before I get onto the fillable section, I'm just going to show you how you can put some text in the headers and footers. So double click at the bottom, into the footers. Once you're happy, double click back into the main section and then we can begin to add in our fillable sections. Now you don't have to, you can simply print this form out if you want to, but if you want this to be digital, you need to find the developer tab. Now if you don't have the developer tab, go up to Word, Preferences, Go to Ribbon and Toolbar, and on this section, scroll down to the bottom and make sure Developer is ticked, and then click Save. Then click on the Developer tab, and then insert the cursor into your first section. Let's go to the name, and then you need to insert a text box. So click on that. You can see this shaded area. Double click, and then you've got a number of different options here, but really the only one that you really need is to maximize the length of your text. So in here, I can only afford 22 characters before it will start to impinge on this form and start to knock the table out. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but if you do, I'm going to place in 22 and click OK. Now to test this, you have to protect the form and then you begin to type and then I'm going to type all the way along and then now I can type no longer and I've filled that section. So that works brilliantly. And then in this department one, we can actually use a drop down menu and I'll show you how to do that. Let's unprotect the form, go to combo box. You can see we've got another shaded area here, double click, and we can begin to type in the drop downs that we would want in this section. So I'm going to start off with a title of the box and I'm going to just type in click here for an instruction, press enter. Then I'm going to type in my departments. And once I'm finished, I'm just going to bookmark this departments and then click OK. And then again, if I protect the form, and then I've got a little arrow here, click on that, and you can see we've got the options that become a drop down menu. Now you can simply copy and paste all of these. So if I double click on them, and then it, you can see it's highlighted, press Command or Control C, and then move the cursor to this section. Oh, what I haven't done is unprotect the form. You can't edit this form unless you unprotect it. So click on the protect form. You know it's unprotected because everything no longer is greyed out. Then move the cursor and then press Command or Control V. So then we can copy it across that box. If you want to change the characters again, double click. Instead of 22, let's just put 10 in because if your employee IDs are only 10 figures long, you're going to know that that's all you're going to need. Then across to position and again you can just Command or Control V and again in this section here. And if you want to check the characters, again, just double click on them and you can just change that if you need to. So down to dates, again, we can do a text box and in here, you're only ever going to need 10 characters for a date. Click OK, copy it, Command or Control C and paste. And then for the clock, we can do the same for the check-in times. Double click, you're only going to need five characters for this. 
because it's a time. And if you copy that, we can literally just select all of this and paste them all in. And you can see they're not quite lined up. So if we select them all, go to layout and then reselect this align to center left, or you can align to center. Again, we can copy and paste them here as well. So select the cells and just paste them across. And again, we'll put those in the middle and then paste it across here. And I'm not sure why this has merged. So let's unmerge these two cells. Let's click in this cell, go to layout, split cells and we want one column and two rows and press OK. There we go. And then we'll just paste that across there as well. So don't forget to go in and just change these from five to let's say 20, just to make sure you've got enough to enter in a name. Perfect. So at the end of the form, once you're happy, you can go to the developer tab, you can protect the form as it is, or you can go to this shading here and switch it off. So you've got a perfectly plain form, but once you protect it, you can click anywhere and it will work as a form. So it, you can't click in any of the boxes and edit it. It will click straight onto this section and will begin to type. But if you prefer to have the shading on so you can identify the boxes, then you can keep those. It's absolutely fine. Once you're happy, you can go to file, you can save it as a PDF or a Word document. Down here is PDF and click OK. Or you can save it as a template. So go to Save as Template. And as long as it's in your templates file and it's in the Microsoft Word template, then when you open up your documents at the beginning, then you will see your templates on the home page and you can simply go and edit this form if you choose to and it will always be saved in your templates and click Save. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.